Hello, hello. Calling you from rainy England. Oh, no, not England, Marley Carlton. How can you bear it? All those dreary people. <laughs> when were you last here? I've, I've never been. I, I told you, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you now? Well, not in England and, and not imprisoned either. And you, Charlotte Rose, where are you? Oh, I'm still trapped. With your family in Paris? Oh, no. The real prison is being kept away from my beloved Charles. I thought we could find some way to reunite. I believed we could be together again. But now it's slipping further and further away until even my imagination can't see a way. The prison they've chosen for him is the army. And his father has taken me to court. Me! Charged with unlawfully marrying a minor. Oh, Charlotte Rose, you cougar, you! Well, he was only a few months from being 25, the age of consent to legally be able to marry. Yeah, but still 12 years younger than you. Uh, that's nothing. My husband married me when I was only 13 and he was three times my age. And nobody charged him with anything. Well, you have to understand, Mary Catherine, that the real issue is not about age, it's about status, about rank. This Charles Brieur of, of our Charlotte Rose, he's only ever an actor, certainly not someone to join our family. <laughs> but if he was an actor, wouldn't his father be delighted to marry up? Well, excuse me, there's nothing wrong with his rank. I would not marry a peasant. No, it is merely about his lack of age and my lack of money. Uh -huh. Surely, love is love. And yet here we are, both silenced. Oh, dear. And yet this is the story that the families will choose to tell about age and seduction. And they will leave out the truth, the truth of what you feel, of the truth of what you want to say. And that's the same reason that I myself am locked out of Versailles, far away from... The only one I will ever love. <laughs> Not even able to in include her in my stories. Silenced again. Then another story must be told. Another escape must be made. From your new husband, the Marquis de Nail, perhaps? <gasps> oh no, Charlotte Rose, you're not married to the Marquis. No. The family had made all the arrangements, but it came to an end when he received my betrothal gift. Toad's feet and spells. The king, for some reason, thought I was bewitching the Marquis, as if I was a part of the whole affair of the poisons. Oh, but the affair of the poisons, that was all so long ago. I would have hoped it was all forgotten. It must have been 20 years ago since the ladies of the court were paying for witchcraft. Really just aphrodisiacs, abortions and poisons in the sequence of most relationships. But following that, there was a, a wave of executions that should have washed it all away. It shouldn't touch you in this day and age. Perhaps, but it was the end of that betrothal. That and the fact I was having an affair with the king's son. Oh, <laughs> you naughty girl. Well, whatever. Whatever the Marquis felt, it was my end of time at court. And now you find me locked up here in a tower in the Abbey of Jeanne en Brie. But I can still write my fairy tales. In fact, I have a story about a girl trapped in a tower, just like I am. Would you like to hear it? Oh, oh it yes, please. It's called Personette. Once upon a time, a young couple were very much in love and soon they were with child. The young woman was so, had the cravings, you know, how young mothers have the cravings for things. And nearby there was a fairy and the fairy had an exquisite garden full of all the best herbs and, and vegetables and, and fruits. But the thing that the girl wanted more than anything in the world was parsley. And at this time in this world, parsley was rare. But the lady, the fairy in the garden, she had it. And so the young mother, the young pregnant girl, she said to her husband, husband dear, I need parsley, I need parsley more than anything in the entire world, you must get it for me. And he begrudgingly agreed. 
and he went and went around the fence of this walled garden and he couldn't find a way in. He kept going for days until one day the door was ajar and he fell, went in and he grabbed a handful of parsley and returned it to his craving wife. She was overjoyed by having so much parsley that she gobbled it up. But soon she was wanting more. Husband, I need some more parsley. You don't understand. I'm so, I've got so much craving. And so the husband went again for days. He tried to get into the yard, but he couldn't. And so he kept going until one day the door was ajar. And when he went inside, he found the fairy there. The fairy had caught him with the parsley in his hand. And she, he explained why he needed the parsley. And the fairy said, I tell you what, if you let me take your child and raise her as my own, you can have as much parsley as you like. And so the young man agreed. And he kept going back to take parsley to his new new wife, his new bride. So eventually the time came when the, when the young girl was going to give birth and the fairy arrived and helped deliver the baby. And it was a little girl whom she named Personette after the parsley. And she blessed this child with crystal water and she swaddled her in cloth and she took her home. And she, the Personette never saw her birth parents again. But the fairy raised her with all the utmost love and care that any mother would. Eventually, Personette grew, and soon she was 12 years old, and the fairy started to worry about the world outside. And so the fairy built a tall silver tower that was furnished with all of the possible things that anyone would ever need. And she put Personette there. Personette could see out of one window, she could see the ocean out of one side, she could see a forest, but she couldn't get out because her windows were at the top of this tower and she had no way of getting out of the tower except one. The fairy had installed her there and by her magic had left. But to come back, the fairy would come and ask Personette to let down her hair because Personette had the most wonderful golden hair. It was about 50 metres long. It went all the way to the ground. And when the fairy called out, Personette, let down your hair, she would climb the hair and arrive there to visit Personette. Personette had everything possible that she wanted to do in her tower. She had books and games and musical instruments and all of the things a young woman should know. But she was lonely and she used to sit at her window, and she would, one of the windows, and she would sing her song. Willows white and aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver, I sit here alone forever on this island by the sea. And this went on for some time, until one day a prince was hunting in the forest and he had become lost from his hunting party. And he heard the singing from the window. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver. I sit here alone forever on the island by the sea. And he looked and in the window he saw the most glorious young woman with golden tresses that just blew out the window. And he was entranced. And he looked around the tower to find a way in, but he could not. He went into the village and he asked about the girl in the tower. And nobody knew much about it except that a fairy had put her there. And he returned to the tower and he saw the fairy call out, Personette, let down your hair. And watched as Personette put her hair out the window and watched the fairy climb up. Once the fairy had gone, the young man, Prince, as they always are, came over and he called out, Personette, let down your hair. And so she did, thinking it was the fairy. But when he climbed to the top and got inside, she was astounded to see not a fairy, but a young man. And she stepped back, frightened, because she was afraid of people from the outside. She'd never seen a man before, and she had thought they were monsters. But his eyes looked kind, and he spoke to her in kind words and told her about the world outside. And eventually she grew to trust him. Eventually she grew to love him. And soon he asked her for a hand in marriage, which she did. And then she went through with the wedding ceremony, not really knowing what it was all about, but she did it anyway. Soon, this continued for some time, but soon Personette was visibly different. Her breast had started to enlarge and her belly had started to show. And the fairy soon figured it out. Oh, you wicked child, she said. What have you done? All my protection for nothing. And Personette was devastated. 
because she thought the fairy had loved her. Instead, the fairy chopped off her long tresses, took her out of the window and whisked her off to a tiny little place by the sea where she was all alone. And that's where Personet gave birth to two little babies, a boy and a girl. Meanwhile, the fairy wanted to enact revenge on the prince. She kept the hair, and when he came and he called out, Personet, let down your hair, the fairy put the hair out. The prince climbed up, and seeing the fairy there, he was shocked and angry. Where is Personet? What have you done with her? And using him, his own means, he jumped out of the window. Now, when he got to the bottom, he should have been broken to pieces, but all that he had was no vision. He had lost his sight. And so he wandered around in the darkness for days, for weeks, for months, for years. And he kept going, eating berries, and he lived on very, very little. Until one day he had enough, and he was lying down by the side of a tree, and he heard a voice. Willows white and aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver. I sit here alone forever on this island by the sea. My personette, he said, and he went there calling her, trying to find her voice. And two children came out to greet him and they said, Father, they knew him straight away. And when Personette saw him, she held her in his arms and she cried tears and her tears fell onto his eyes and soon he could see again. He could see his beautiful Personette and his beautiful two children. Touched by this loving family reunion, the fairy who had once loved Personet so very, very much, thought to fix the situation. The fairy arrived, gave them a nice meal, and took them back to the prince's castle. And that is where Personet and the prince and their two children and the fairy lived for the rest of their days in happiness. So, Charlotte Rose, you gave your heroine a happy ending there. That's more than I can ever do in my stories. Oh, well, look, it's only in fiction. I have to acknowledge my own reality. I can't run off because I have no one to run away with. I didn't meet anyone. I ran off alone. My lover is dead, my husband in another country, but I know now I can make my own way. Yes, but you are still an exile, Mary Catherine. We all are. Of course we are. The king wants to get rid of us all. None of us have any place to call our own. And when we are gone from life entirely, will anything we have done be remembered? <laughs> 